Okay, we're going to take a quick look at this A140E and what we're really looking at is this Simpson gear set power flow because that transaxle uses that gear set. So one of the first things you have to be able to understand and read is we want to make sure we understand a function chart and an apply device chart. So this chart tells me the names of everything that we're looking at. And if you watch the other video, I use the words like forward clutch, direct clutch, uh, F1, F2, those sort of names. So by understanding what everything does here, that's going to help us understand how that power flow works. So when we look at the forward clutch, also known as C1, it tells us that it's going to connect the input shaft to that front ring gear. And as we go down these, we're going to be able to see exactly what everything does. Now we did have a direct clutch, and that direct clutch, what it does is it connects that input shaft to that front and rear sun gear assembly. We're going to move down to this B1, and it's called the second coast brake. I didn't use those terms before, but that is your band. And what your band does is it grabs a hold of that planetary sun gear, and it's going to keep it from turning in either direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. That's going to hold that to the housing. Then we're going to look at the B2 clutch pack, which I did talk about, and that B2 clutch pack actually works or applies pressure on that number one one-way clutch or that F1. And what that's going to do is that's going to prevent that front and rear sun gear from turning counterclockwise. We didn't talk about the B3 clutch pack, but we're going to look at that just a little bit more today. And we're going to notice that that is going to prevent the rear planetary carrier and that's going to keep it from turning either clockwise or counterclockwise. We did talk about these two one-way clutches down here, the first one-way clutch or F1, and we know that that did work with that second brake right up over here. And so when the second brake is operating, it's going to prevent the front and rear planetary gear from turning counterclockwise. That was the sun gear we were talking about. And we also talked about this F2 one-way clutch, or the number two one-way clutch. And in the previous video, we were actually able to see that that prevents the rear planetary carrier from turning in a counterclockwise direction. If we look at a line drawing of a planetary gear set for the Simpson planetary gear set, I do want to just take a little look at some of these items here. Here we have our C1 input, and that's coming from our input shaft that comes from our torque converter. And when that one is applied, the power comes in, goes over, and goes over to this red ring gear. So that's your first ring gear, and that's how we get the power into that planetary gear set. That's our forward clutch. Now, if we apply the C2 clutch pack, that's my direct clutch. We still have the power that comes in from the input shaft, but now that's going to come over and that's going to apply right to that sun gear, and that's going to make the sun gear the drive member. All of these items down here, they are what we call a brake. And what a brake is, is a brake is something that holds something to the housing. So this down here represents the transmission housing, and we see that this B1, and again, remember, this is my band, and it's going up here in green, and that's grabbing a hold of that sun gear, and so when B1 is applied, it's going to grab that sun gear, and it's going to hold it to the housing there. Here's our F1 and our B2. Notice that they are in series with each other, so F1 will not be active unless B2 is applied. However, if we apply the B2, we are going to go ahead and grab a hold of that sun gear, and we're going to hold it to the housing, and it's going to keep it from going counterclockwise, because that's what the one-way clutch does. Back here, we have two devices, and they are in parallel. They're both connected to the housing down here. 
And what we're going to see is this is our F2 one-way clutch, and that comes around here and that works on that rear carrier assembly. And so this is going to keep the rear carrier from going counterclockwise. We also have the B3 device, which is also connected to the housing, and it's also connected to that rear carrier assembly. So we can prevent the rear carrier from going counterclockwise by using either device. However, this B3 prevents it from going counterclockwise, plus prevents it from going clockwise. So it's going to prevent it from going in both directions. This blue line here, along with the intermediate shaft, which is here in blue, that's spline to this rear ring gear right here. And you can see that that goes all the way through and comes up and goes over to my front carrier, implying or letting you know that both the front carrier and the rear ring gear, they are spline to that intermediate shaft that goes to that transfer gear. Now that transfer gear just transfers the power to another gear, which ends up going over to your differential assembly. So let's take a look at what these gears actually look like. If you watched the previous video, then you would have seen what these gears look like. And so I've got my front ring gear, then my front carrier. This combination sun gear right here does not have the shell on it right now. Then I have my rear carrier and finally my rear ring gear. So I'll remember that the rear ring gear and the front carrier those two are both connected to that output shaft. When we get into a four speed or a modified gear set to give us the four speeds, then we have to add in the overdrive planetary gear set. So previously we were working with just the three speed in the Simpson. This is the Simpson portion of it. Now we have to add in this overdrive planetary gear set. And that gives us a couple of other items. That gives us an overdrive clutch, that gives us an overdrive one-way clutch, and it gives us an overdrive brake, B0. So you heard me mention those on the previous video. This simply adds another simple planetary gear set. And if you remember from the previous video, that intermediate shaft comes over and actually connects directly to an overdrive carrier. And then we have an overdrive sun gear in the middle of that, which gets held to the housing by that overdrive brake. There was also an overdrive clutch and an overdrive one-way clutch, and those would actually connect this carrier mechanism right to that sun gear when applied, and that's going to cause them to turn together. So if you do not want this in an overdrive mode, you're going to be applying this overdrive clutch right there. So this would be considered an application chart, and this is going to tell us which one of these devices is actually going to be functioning based upon the drive conditions that we're in. So if we place the transmission in drive and we're going to be in first gear, what this is going to tell me is that this C0 or overdrive clutch is going to be applied. It tells me that the C1 or the forward clutch is also going to be applied and functioning. The overdrive one-way clutch, F0, and F stands for freewheeling, that is also applied. And finally, the F2 one-way clutch or the second one-way clutch is applied. We will need all of those devices to give us our first gear gear ratio. So you can see that as we look down through the different drive operations, we can see how we can identify the devices that are in function under the different driving conditions. Notice that when we get into overdrive, we no longer use the overdrive clutch and we add in the C2 clutch pack in addition to that C1 clutch pack, we also activate the B0 clutch pack for the overdrive brake. That is going to give us our overdrive mode. Now we can see some other similarities as we look through each one of these power flow ranges here, but I want to just orientate you just a little bit. Here we can see that C2 is operating in reverse as well as C2 operates in third gear and it operates in overdrive. So if there is something wrong with the C2 clutch pack, 
then you won't be able to drive the car in reverse, you won't have third gear, and you won't have overdrive mode. Now we use this chart to help us determine how that power flow actually works. So when we take a look at this, and let's go back to first gear, we know that we're using the C1, and if we come over and take a look and see what C1 does, we're gonna notice that C1 forward clutch connects the input shaft to that front planetary ring gear. We will see that when we apply that C1, we're gonna bring that power flow into that front ring gear right there. So when we wanna do this on a workbench, we have to turn that front ring gear every time it says that C1 is applied. If we come over and take a look at what else is operating for drive first gear, we're going to see that F2 is operational. And for right now, we can simply ignore the overdrive. But let's go back and take a look and see what F2 does. So here, when we want to take a look at what F2 does, we'll see that F2 prevents the rear planetary carrier from turning counterclockwise. So all we have to do is hold the rear planetary carrier or hold F2 and turn C1 or turn that front ring gear and we will get first gear. If we want to look to see what happens in second gear, we continue to use C1, but we now apply B2 and we also activate F1. So what does that mean for our apply devices? That simply means that when we do this and go back to here, it simply means that when we look at this chart, we still turn that front planetary ring gear, but now we're applying B2, and B2 is holding the outer race of F1. And what does F1 do? Well, F1 prevents the front and rear planetary sun gear from turning counterclockwise. So if we hold on to the number one one-way clutch, or if we prevent the sun gear from turning counterclockwise, we will be able to simulate second gear. So this is just a quick example how we can use the application chart and we can use the function chart to determine how the power flow works through this transmission.